Hi, I'm Scott Williford, founder and CEO of V-Link Solutions. I have with me the pleasure of having a conversation with Peter Barron of Carabiner Communications. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, Peter, you and I have been talking this afternoon about a lot of different cool stuff uh, before we got on camera. So, before we jump into that, why don't you tell me a little bit about and tell our, our viewers a little bit about your business and what you do and, and why I have you here today. Thank you. I'd be glad to. Well, Carabina Communications, we're a small group of uh, what we like to say tech nerds that are into communications. Uh, we represent uh, technology companies that are trying to establish themselves uh, and also life science companies. Uh, they can either be venture funded or funded through their own revenues, but for the most part they're going to be within that sort of startup stage to being about 10 years old. Okay. It's when they're trying to figure out who they are, how to communicate what they have uh, to communicate and get that message to their customers and we're able to help them package that up, say it the right way and get it out in an effective manner. Well, and, and I'm a past client, so I can testify that you definitely know what you're doing in that area. In fact, we work together, it's been at least uh, 10, 12, maybe even 15 years ago, our yeah. first in, in engagement. So you've been doing this for a while. That's right. We were both about 20 years old then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and no kids. <laughs> so, so, so how long have you been uh, you know, out there working with companies in this area? And, and you know, how did you really get started in this? Because it's very intriguing what you do. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting. I've been doing this in Atlanta uh, since 1985. Wow. Okay. And so, what, 2011 now. I actually started uh, on Madison Avenue in New York. Okay. Just doing general consumer PR. Uh, in fact, there was a Save the Statue of Liberty campaign going on at the time. I'm a new graduate from college with a degree in journalism and PR. Uh, worked hard to get it, and my first assignment was to put t shirts on Cabbage Patch dolls. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, you've come okay. a long way. Yeah, <laughs> I worked out that time to do that, and I thought, okay, I'm not going to be able to build my career doing that. And I realized I needed to do something uh, that would give me an area of specialty. I moved to Atlanta, got a job with a computer software company, and learned all about computers in the early '80s, mm -hmm. um, and really enjoyed that. And so that that gave me the affection for entrepreneurs. Um, but also for technology too. So you kind of marry those two things together. That's how I got started. Well, and I think it's interesting because I do know a little bit about your background that you, you've had that big corporate America experience and big company experience and you've worked with some pretty, pretty big clients, yet you prefer and enjoy working with uh, young entrepreneurs and early stage companies. Yeah, I, I do. And I've, I've wondered why, you know, is it some kind of a problem I've got? <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've worked with Apple and IBM and Motorola and HP, some of the bigger technology companies. And while that was fun and I learned a lot, it was also a little bit frustrating because every year a big project, even though it may be funded, mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. very easily be killed. And I've worked on projects that I became passionate about that were defunded. Right. And they'd spent millions of dollars on developing the product. That's not going to happen with an entrepreneur who's invested a lot of his own money and some other people's money into a concept. So I get to work with entrepreneurs closely and provide them with the communications help and advice that they need. And I think one of the reasons I love entrepreneurs too, I thought about it a little, my dad had his own business. He was a bricklayer and uh, every day would come home dirty and tired from working and uh, we'd sit down at the kitchen table. He'd tell me what he did that day and I thought, well, how cool to be able to work for yourself. And wow, so I yeah. think that entrepreneurial gene was implanted in me kind of early. <laughs> well, and, and, and like you said, I think that being an entrepreneur and being a serial entrepreneur, I think that energy and that commitment and that level of, you know, hey, the, I'm taking a huge risk in here. They're not going to back out. They're really looking for ways to grow their business. They're looking for ways to, to see their dreams come alive. And then when they get a guy like you on their team, it's good to know that that you feel the same way about the projects and the, and the campaigns that you're working on. Yeah, we also know they can't afford really to make mistakes. Right. Um, you know, you, you get very few chances to communicate properly what you're doing. People's attention span is pretty limited nowadays, more so than it used to be. Right. There's a tremendous amount of noise, so you really have to get your message right and say it uh, the correct way and to the right people. You know, you make a really good point. So what I'm going to do is we're going to wrap up this segment now 
And then we're going to come back with another segment where we're going to dive into just exactly what you said about the importance of getting the message right, the importance of how to expand that to be successful.